When you look at the advent of Europeans in India, you will come across the Portuguese who arrived first in 1498, followed by the Dutch in 1605, the English in 1608, and the Danes in 1620. The French were preoccupied with the European affairs. Hence, they were the last European power to arrive and establish trade centers and colonies in the Indian subcontinent. The French East India Company was founded in 1664 and it was the brainchild of John Baptiste Colbert, the finance minister of King Louis XIV. Unlike the East India Company, which was a private venture, the French East India Company was financed and run by the French government. The company, however, faced issues with funding. To solve this, Colbert appealed to high-ranking dignitaries and merchants to invest in the company. Many refused, while others joined to please the king who had keen interest in the company. The French East India Company was granted a monopoly of trade in the Indian and Pacific Oceans for the next 50 years. The king also granted a concession to carry out trade and establish colonies in Madagascar. The concession also extended to other territories apart from Madagascar that the French could conquer. However, after countless attempts and massive expenditure, the French could not revive their colonies in Madagascar. So they now led eyes on the Indian subcontinent. The French East India Company sanctioned an expedition to India. This was led by Francois Caron. He was the director general of the French East India Company and was also accompanied by a Persian named Markara. In 1667, Francois Caron landed on the west coast of India at Surat, where he established the first French factory in India. Likewise, Merkara obtained a patent from the Sultan of Golconda for another factory. In 1669, he established a French factory on the east coast in Masulipatnam. Thus began the French expansion in India. Not just factories for trade, the French also had townships in India. In 1673, Saista Khan, the Subedar of Bengal, granted permission to the French to establish a township in Bengal. And this township was established at Chandar Nagar, present day Chandar Nagar, near Calcutta. During the same year, Sher Khan Lodi, the governor of Valikondapuram, granted land for another settlement to the French. It was given to Francois Martin, who was the director of the Masuli Patnam factory after Francois Caron's death in 1673. The land that was granted came to be known as Pondicherry or the present day Puducherry and was founded in 1674. Francois Martin became the first French governor of Pondicherry. Under his leadership, Pondicherry transformed into an important French territory. The French also set up factories in various parts of India, particularly in the coastal regions. Their major trade centers were Balasore and Kasim Bazar. Like every business faced problems, the French too encountered a few setbacks during their initial run. First, they had problems in their own country. Since the company was state-run, it depended on the state heavily for funds. These funds came from stakeholders who largely consisted of the nobles. These nobles were content with short-term profits over the longevity of the commercial venture of the French East India Company. Second, France was autocratic, meaning the king had the final power, unlike democracy. This meant that the company was bound by traditional and conservative French values that were counterproductive for the working and expansion of a commercial venture. The instability and political environment 
absence of private stakeholders and tradition all affected the business venture negatively. But the company faced problems in the Indian subcontinent as well. During the time, the French were expanding in the Indian subcontinent. Other European powers were already present. This led to numerous conflicts. The French first faced conflicts with the Dutch. This French-Dutch rivalry left the French in an unfavorable and weak position in the Indian subcontinent. In 1672, the Dutch attacked the French. The French Admiral Delay lost sent home to the Dutch. The Dutch were backed by the English in their conflicts with the French, even though they were rivals themselves in the Indian subcontinent. This Anglo-Dutch alliance in India can be attributed to the glorious revolution of 1688. The revolution saw Mary II, along with her Dutch husband, William III, ascend the throne in England. Since the English throne now housed a Dutch prince, the English were now allies to the Dutch. This Anglo-Dutch alliance was fatal against the French. In 1693, the Dutch captured Pondicherry. The French regained Pondicherry after the Treaty of Ryswick in September 1697. The Treaty of Ryswick was a peace treaty signed at the end of the War of the Grand Alliance. The War of the Grand Alliance was fought by King Louis XIV of France against England, the United Province of the Netherlands and the Austrian Habsburgs. The treaty between the English and the French provided for the restoration of all the territorial conquests. However, the Dutch still garrisoned at Pondicherry for another two years after the treaty was signed. Next, from 1701 to 1714, the War of Spanish Succession began. This adversely affected the French who were on the losing side of the war. Hence, they were forced to abandon their factories at Surat and Masulipatnam in India and Bantam in Indonesia, which was another big blow to the French. On December 31st, 1706, Francois Martin died, leaving the French even more vulnerable. In the wake of all these issues, the French needed to recuperate and reorganize. Hence, the French East India Company was reorganized in 1720. Now, it was granted the status as a perpetual company of the Indies. The newly reorganized French East India Company regained its strength. This was carried out under two able governors, Perry Christophe Lenoy and Perry Benoist Dumas between 1720 and 1742. The French had also gotten new territories. They occupied Mauritius in 1721 and Reunion in the Indian Ocean. In India, they occupied Yanam in 1723, Mahe in 1725, and Karaikal in 1739. The initial setbacks faced by the French East India Company, starting from the financial and internal struggles of the company, the French-Dutch rivalry to Francois Martin's death was just a precursor to a bigger problem that the French had to face soon and this was the war against the English.